Hey everyone, and welcome to another challenge write-up video. This is Web Trap Track uh, by Cyber Apocalypse 2023. Um, it was a pretty fun web challenge where we need to abuse a server-side request forgery to inject a pickle deserialization bug uh, into a Redis instance. Um, so we're given a Docker file, or sorry, Docker uh, URL and some download files. If we take a look at the application, um, we can see there's this trap track uh, thing. Uh, they give us the credentials and the source code. I'm just going to type them in. It was admin admin. I, I don't think that was really part of the challenge. So it says we uh, we logged in, uh, change password. Yes, 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 yes. Um, so we're given some sort of trap list and it has a name, a URL, a status, a track ID, and the health. If we add another one, so let's say a uh, website, uh, I'm going to do my personal website, Conrad.io. We add it. Um, we can see everything added. And eventually, um, it's going to go from waiting to completed or something like that. And we'll find out in a second that it's actually making a request to this URL. Um, we can also delete. There we go. Completed. And its health was good. So the website is live. Um, yeah, let's look at the source code. So there's a couple different things running. Uh, they give us uh, this entire challenge directory. There's the Flask application. There's some session thing. There's some instance thing. And then there's some worker script. Um, first, let's look at config, supervisor config. So this will show us what's actually running in the challenge. Uh, there's that Flask thing. There is a Redis uh, running on the box. And there's also this worker thread. We know if there's going to be a worker thread, it's going to be part of the exploit. Like there's no reason a challenge author would write both a web server and a worker if the worker wasn't somehow involved. So we can look at the worker first. Uh, and so it has two files. There's this main file. Um, all it's going to do is it's going to connect to Redis. It's going to look for work items on some Redis queue. Uh, increment, decrement some fields. And then at some point, the worker is going to get a work item. It looks like it's this URL. And then it's going to call this request function on the URL, which is just a curl. So it's going to do a curl on the URL. And if the response looks OK, it says health to one. And then it sets the job to complete. Cool. Um, and so that's what we saw here. So it, it would have taken my Conrad IO URL. And it would have made a get request to the domain. It saw that it was live. And so now we get that green sort of thing. But we can see, uh, depending on what sort of validation goes on as entries are inserted into the uh, the Redis job queue, um, it's possible that this will just be an arbitrary server-side request forgery because we can make requests anywhere we want. So potentially one other bug. Um, you might have also saw there's some other interesting stuff. Uh, the jobs, you can see it's doing a bunch of pickle dumps. So that means somewhere it's going to be doing some pickle loads. So here's another pickle loads. So when it gets jobs off of the queue, uh, they're pickle encoded. Uh, and so we might be exploiting a pickle vulnerability also, but we need to see if we can inject nasty stuff into the jobs. Like you can't do a pickle deserialization into one of the fields. Like it needs to be like a, a full pickle object. Um, so there's that. There's also the application. Um, there's a little bit, most of the stuff is pretty boring, uh, but if we go to this routes page, uh, there's two or three interesting routes. The first one is that add track. So this is where we added the Conrad IO. So we can see it's going to request, or it's going to take in JSON data. Then it's going to, from that JSON data, it's going to look for a name and a URL. And that seems to be the only two fields it's grabbing, uh, data.get. The only two are right here. Cool. Um, it's just going to make sure they're not empty. It's going to create a job queue. So let's take a look at that real quick. Create job queue. Um, it's just going to put it in. It's going to pickle this entire object here. So we can't do an arbitrary pickle bug because um, it would need to take in the full object, and we're not able to pass the full object. So it doesn't look like we can pickle, but we still get to submit an arbitrary URL. Uh, there's no validation being done. So interesting. Um, and then the rest of it's pretty boring. Like you can delete stuff. Uh, you can get the status. Um, the status field is interesting, though. Uh, we can see it's going to, uh, when it gets it from the job queue, I think this is when it does a deserialization, yeah, pickle loads. So um, if you've seen this trick before, uh, this challenge really isn't too bad. And the, the trick is uh, we can't directly insert a pickle object into this dictionary, but we can actually just call Redis and have Redis do it for us using a server-side request forgery. Um, because Redis just takes like standard uh, commands, um, you can just make a request to it using that, that curl call. And you can insert, we're going to do an H set, we're going to set the job queue, and we're going to insert a fake job that's a pickle object. And that pickle object, when it deserializes, it'll turn into a uh, arbitrary code execution. Um, I should also note the challenge was to get code execution. Uh, they also included this read flag, which is a set UID binary. 
Uh, that means when a challenge does that, that means you have to get code execution on the box. You can't just read a file. Um, so it's telling us that we need to get code execution. Um, but yeah, with that, we have a plan. Um, so to kind of show what this all looks like, uh, I'll, I'll just go to the solve script. Um, this is it. Let me uh, grab the, the Docker container real quick. Uh, this is the one during the challenge server. Cool. Um, so putting everything together, this is how we can generate pickle payloads. So I, I just have this code from some other challenge. Um, I just, it's a little function. You pass it whatever command you want to create and it'll create that pickle deserialization thing. So here's our pickle RCE. Uh, when it's loaded, it's going to call reduce at some point and it's going to do an import OS and then an OS system and command. So when we want a pickle object, we just call this generate pickle thing, uh, which I do down here. <coughs> So when this is deserialized by the web server, it's going to call read flag. It's going to set that to temp flag.txt, and then it's going to post that data to a webhook site we control. Um, there we go. Cool. We have it open. So it's going to take the flag and post it there. Um, so first step, let's we're going to do request. We're going to log in with admin admin, and we need cookies so we can make future request. Then we're going to generate that pickle payload. Like I said, it's going to submit the flag to an endpoint we control. Um, and this is where like I think the actual fun bug is. So when doing that server-side request forgery, um, it's easiest to use the Gopher protocol. Um, I, I think the Gopher protocol doesn't really send too many um, like headers and stuff. Like actually, let's uh, let's just print this out. We're gonna get rid of this and get rid of this, and let's print the uh, server-side request forgery. Oops, not that. Python three solve. So this is the request we're gonna make, but we can actually just mess with this ourselves. So what we're going to do is that's the, the curl request that's actually going to happen and we're just going to spoof it on our end. So it's going to do, let's set up a netcat listener on port 6379 and let's make this curl request. So we can see what's going to happen on the server when this curl request happens. We're making a curl using the gopher protocol to localhost on port 6379. You can see there's an underscore h set jobs 100 and then this base 64 encoded object. So if you submit that, this is what uh, Redis is going to see. Um, we can see when we do the gopher protocol, there's not all those like HTTP headers that you would see um, if you were to make a normal HTTP request. And I think Redis now, because this attack is so prevalent, these server-side request forgeries, uh, Redis, I think they stop on both post and host are the two keywords that they see that'll terminate the connection. But the gopher protocol doesn't use those, so we get to just send whatever we want. So here we are just sending arbitrary Redis commands, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, like I said, we're doing an H set jobs to this. So I'm going to overwrite the 100th job uh, with this payload. Um, and if you were to b do a pickle serialization, we can actually, no, we, we can't, it would be tricky. But um, yeah, if you base 64 decoded this and then you did a pickle loads on this, it would call out to our RCE here uh, and everything should just work and we'll get flag. So let's actually do it for real. Uh, we'll get rid of this. Let's see what happens Oops, when we run the solve script. Do to do, do trap added successfully. Um, I think we might have to wait a second because it executes every 60 seconds, I think. Um, we might be able to go to the website and just force force it. Go for it's in progress. There we go. And here is the post request, HTTP, uh, HTTP trap queue to RCE. So pretty fun challenge. I think if you've seen that Redis server-side request forgery before, uh, this challenge really wasn't too bad, but overall, uh, a lot of fun. So I'll see you at the next one.